In the golden age of Japanese automotive excellence, the 90s, Toyota solidified its position as a reliable car manufacturer and ventured into the world of performance cars. As carbureted engines gave way to electric fuel injection, Toyota needed a successor to their flagship 2TG engine, leading to the birth of the legendary 4AGE. From its initial release in 1983 to its iterations in motorsports and various models, the 4AG engine remains a favorite among car enthusiasts. Let's delve into the details of this iconic power plant that has left an incredible mark on the racing scene and car enthusiasts alike. So let's start all the way at the beginning. When the 4AG engine got released by Toyota, the engine was one of the first Japanese mass production dual overhead cam 4 valve per cylinder engines on the market. Unlike its predecessor, the 2TG, which utilized twin sideshaft carburetors, the 4AGE incorporated electronic fuel injection. Toyota's engineers focused on maximizing performance and efficiency, leading to the engine's exceptional design. Now, the first generation 4AGE found its home in the Toyota Corolla AE86, one of the most iconic Japanese cars of all time. And I'm sure you all recognize this car, and if you don't, I have a cartoon for you to watch. Anyways, after the AE86, Toyota did something stupid. You see, this was the last time the 4AGE engine powered a rear-wheel drive vehicle, as the subsequent Corolla models transitioned to a front-wheel drive layout. The 4AGE equipped AE86 gained immense popularity, partly due to its impressive power to weight ratio and legendary handling, and of course, the fact that it played an important role in the initial D, which also helped boost its popularity, especially in recent years. But there is actually a lot more to this engine. This engine is proper cool, and we will go deeper into all the small things that makes it so special. Now one of the things that makes this engine so iconic is the sound, and to enhance the 4AGE's performance and sound, Toyota sought the expertise of Yamaha Motor Corporation in developing this engine cylinder head. The collaboration between Toyota and Yamaha resulted in a distinctive induction noise that enthusiasts have come to love. And when Yamaha builds something, it always sounds insane. I mean, this same collaboration also played a role in creating the exhilarating exhaust note of the Lexus LFA's V10 engine, which is, to some, the best sounding V10 ever sold, and to others second after the Porsche Carrera GT. Now, it doesn't stop there though. This engine also has a thing called TVIS, or Toyota Variable Intake System. Now, Tevis is an innovative technology implemented in the early iterations of the 4G engine. It was designed to improve the engine's low-end performance and maximize power output across a wide range of engine speeds. The Tevis system operates by utilizing two intake runners per cylinder, simulating the effect of primary and secondary butterfly valves found in carburetor motors. However, Unlike a carburetor which relies on vacuum pressure, the Tevis system uses a solenoid valve to control the opening and closing of the secondary intake runners based on engine speed. At low engine speeds, the solenoid valve closes the secondary intake runners, forcing all the air to flow through the primary intake runner. This configuration creates high intake velocity and increases air fuel mixture turbulence, promoting better combustion efficiency and enhancing low end torque. As the engine speed increases though, the solenoid valve opens the secondary intake runners, allowing a greater volume of air to enter into the combustion chamber. This transition is often referred to as the switchover point. The opening of the secondary intake runner optimizes the engine's volumetric efficiency at higher RPMs, providing a noticeable boost in power delivery. The Tevis system's unique design and operation gives the engine a dual personality, ensuring both low-end torque and high-end power. It offers a similar experience to Honda's early dual overhead cam VTEC engines, where a change in valve timing and lift characteristics provide a noticeable increase in power and induction noise at specific RPM ranges. Now, I have to say, in later iterations of the 4AG engine, such as the 20-valve versions, Toyota moved away from the Tiva system, but it stays cool. And where else will you see such a cool intake manifold? But let's move on to some of the later versions of the motor. As time went on, the 4AG engine underwent several iterations, each with their own unique characteristics. 
The most powerful 16 mile version, nicknamed the Red Top, featured a smaller intake port cross section, eliminating the need for the Diva system we just talked about. Now this red top engine produced 128 horsepower and 105 foot pounds of torque, which doesn't sound like a lot these days, but remember these little cars weighed almost nothing, so it made for one fun little car. Then the Yota did something cool and introduced a supercharged version of the engine. This engine was primarily used in the first generation AW11 Toyota MR2. With 145 horsepower and 140 foot pounds of torque, this supercharged variant provided a significant power boost compared to the nationally aspirated 16 mile version. Now, the added supercharger made the 4AG ZE engine cool, but you see, the petrol heads wanted the engine for something else. You see, the 4AG ZE had stronger internals which could handle boost a lot better, which meant this engine was perfect to use for turbo conversions. Now aside from how loved this engine was by car lovers, it was used in racing as well. You see the 4AGE engine left its mark on the motorsport world as well, particularly in the Formula Atlantic Racing Championship. With its 1600cc displacement, the 4AGE engine became eligible for competition and the series was even renamed the Toyota Atlantic. Toyota Racing Development or TRD developed a racing version of the 4AGE engine specifically for the Formula Atlantic Championship capable of producing 250 horsepower and revving all the way up to 10,000 rpm. Now I would love to get my hands on one of these 10,000 rpm for AGEs and stick it into an AE86, that would be pretty freaking cool. Anyways, the engine was also used in the tuning scene. You see stock, it might have only made 120-ish horsepower, but with the right mods, these engines could be truly something else. Now when building your 4 AGE, there is two routes you can follow naturally aspirated or turbo. Now when going the NA route, the first step is reinforcing the bottom end caps of the engine to withstand the increased power demands. Moving on, the next modification involves increasing the engine's displacement. This is achieved by utilizing a stroker camshaft along with a slight bore adjustment resulting in a 9% increase in displacement. By enlarging the internal dimensions of the engine, more air and fuel can be accommodated leading to improved power output. Furthermore, to maximize performance, attention is directed to enhancing the compression ratio of the engine. Now, the compression ratio refers to the ratio between the volume at the bottom and top of the stroke, also known as top dead center and bottom dead center. Now, the original compression ratio of these motors were 10 to 1, and it can be raised all the way to a really impressive 12.3 to 1. This higher ratio enables the engine to extract more energy from the air fuel mixture, resulting in increased power and efficiency. Next, to ensure optimal sealing within the engine, the oil and piston rings are upgraded to meet elevated demands. This step guarantees proper lubrication and reduced risks of leaks and loss of power. Now we are almost done, there's just one thing left, air. In order to optimize the engine's breathing capability, independent throttle bodies are introduced. Additionally, larger valves and improved valve seating are implemented. These enhancements promote better airflow into the combustion chamber, allowing for more efficient combustion and power generation. How much power will all of these mods bring you? Well, um, about 200 horsepower at the wheels, which doesn't sound all that impressive. But remember, that's almost double what the engine made stock, and that's at the wheels. But I hear you, you want more power. So going the turbo route, you also want to strengthen the internals. So forged H-beam rods, forged pistons, upgraded crank, all of those things so the engine can handle the boost. Then port and flow the head with upgraded valves. While you're there, just get a set of upgraded cams for the motor, then add a nice big turbo and you'll have a little monster on your hands. I mean, there are 900 horsepower 4 AGEs out there, and even here in South Africa's drag racing scene, the 4 AGEs get slapped with the GT35 turbo and then make their way into small Datsun real drive sedans or even mini Datsun pickups. Anyways, enough about the tuning, there is one more iteration of the 4AGE we have not covered yet, the silver top or black top of the 90s. 
Now with the silver top Toyota revamped the 4AGE engine cylinder head, transitioning to a 5 valve per cylinder configuration. The result was the twin cam 20, which featured Toyota's variable valve timing system or VVT on the intake cam. These mods increased the stock power output to 160 horsepower, which really isn't bad. Unfortunately though, this engine was only sold on the Japanese market, so we never got them, except like imports every now and again, which make these engines really rare. At the end of it, all I can say is this is an awesome engine, and the love as well as all the different use cases and different ways to build this engine shows character of real engines. This is why we love cars. Yes, the outer shell can be pretty, but a really good engine makes a car. Now let me know down below what you guys think of this video. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? If you liked it, you like all of my other stuff, so just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?